The Susan Brinder Show is a radio show online broadcasted on YouTube across the United States and globally. The show features guests who speak about health, spirituality, entertainment, and a host of subjects to enlighten people across the nation. Listen to the show that empowers women and men alike and highlights those who have made a difference. I'm Susan Brender, and this is The Susan Brender Show. You know, we're dealing today with Michael Solomon, best-selling author and speaker, a traditionalist who writes from the heart. Now, Michael has been a friend for a long time, and when he talks about his books, he knows what he's talking about. Today, we have a real controversy over the whole issue of climate change. Even our president thinks that it's a horrible thing, and he talks about it all the time, and the newspapers report about it. But Michael Solomon knows what he's talking about. And in his new book called Allegory, How One Man's Lies, Deceit, Arrogance and greed has gaslighted the world. Michael, I want you to tell our audience all about the book because there is so much in this book that people will be absolutely shocked. So tell our audience all about it. Well, basically, Susan, uh, thank you for having me on again. Um, basically, the book uh, is really not designed to change anybody's mind. I just want them to have an open mind and, and look at the subject with clarity. Um, it is absolutely um, appalling at the lies we've been told by Al Gore and his minions over the last 40 years. It's, 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 it's absolutely ridiculous. When I researched everything that he has said about the climate and global warming and, uh, and the environment, every single prediction and everything that he has said since 1992 has not come true. It's all a bunch of lies based on facts, uh, uh, based on, on uh, illusions and um, nothing scientific, consensus and made up stories. I mean, the most appalling thing I've ever heard him say was last week at Davos at the um, financial uh, meeting in in Switzerland uh, I was I was totally in shock when a man gets up screaming like like a like a lunatic and that's exactly what he did that was described not only by uh, by news media but everybody else who's heard it and it's telling everybody that the seas are boiling if the seas are boiling that would be the biggest bullion base we've ever had in the world um and and that the temperature right now within the next 20 years is going to get to 600,000 times more powerful than the bomb that was dropped on Hiroshima. Let me stop you for a minute, Michael, yeah. just for a second. What does he have to gain by saying all of this? Money, I mean money. It's all about the money, Susan. When I was a detective in the New York Police Department, every case we ever started was following the money. Al Gore has earned, according to Forbes magazine and the New York and, and the um, and the Wall Street Journal, he is earning approximately two hundred plus million dollars a year, brokering carbon credits, brokering uh, carbon offsets, and other green energy investments. He set up a corporation in the UK because the corporate taxes are lower than they are in the United States and he is raking in money. The man is, is, is an absolute greedy hound as far as I'm concerned. That's not only my opinion, that's the opinion of 23 major scientists who have been working for the IPCC at the United Nations who have left the organization and quit because the United Nations keeps changing their findings. They will only publish anything that says that man is responsible. Every scientist I've spoken to and everything that I've done was, was based on scientific facts, empirical scientific facts. Now, the question becomes, you are a person who knows a lot, but you have to research it, okay? How do you research it? Because there is so much information out there that, I mean, 
I can't even understand how long it took you to write allegory because there is so much research. So how did you get it? Well, I've been working on the book for over, almost two years, but <laughs> where did I get my research? I got it from the man who invented the internet, Al Gore. Who else? I mean, <laughs> I didn't have to. I didn't have to travel around the world interviewing scientists. I just read their research papers, and then I, I ascertained that they were correct and not uh, and, and not just made up stories and not blogs. So that's what I put together. Let me give you an example of, of some of the things I, that I found out, Susan, that, that you wouldn't believe. Okay. Um, I mean, let's look at some of the things that, that Al Gore has said over the years. First of all, what he said last week, uh, two weeks ago at at, uh, at Davos was unbelievable. He said, you know, the atomic bomb that landed on Hiroshima, the temperature of that bomb at the core where it explodes is 200 million degrees. If that was multiplied times 600,000, the way Al Gore said it would be, and the temperature of the earth would be 600,000, the temperature 600,000 times 200 million degrees would be would be 120 quadrillion degrees centigrade. You couldn't live under that. Let me tell you a story. 200 million degrees alone is five times the center of the sun. The temperature of items melting in the world, steel melts at 2200 degrees, glass at 1700, concrete decomposes at 900 degrees, Rocks and sand at 3,000 degrees. Can you imagine 200 million degrees? The earth would go up in a flash. There would be mm. nothing left. And that's what he's saying. And people are believing this. This is what's the scariest thing in the world. They believe it. You know, this is a very, as I said before, it's a very controversial subject. And the people I talk to believe in it. Well, How do you get them to change their minds? I'm not looking at listening to the facts. And 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 it's and you don't have to be a brain surgeon to understand the facts. Let me give you a couple of facts. In 2009, Gore said that the polar ice cap would be melting by the by the end of the summer. Well, according to the NASA photographs, the the, the polar ice cap grew by 27% which is 533,000 more cubic miles of ice than we've had before. The Hubble Glacier, where cruise ships go up there and show their passengers the Hubble Glacier, they now have to travel 60 kilometers out of the way to get there because the glacier has grown so much that it's blocking the sea lanes. It's just amazing. Um, he said the levels are going to rise by 20 feet. Well, if the sea levels rose by 20 feet, here's a couple of very simple facts that people have to realize. The Statue of Liberty has been sitting in New York Harbor for 136 years. She still hasn't gotten her sandals wet. Photographs of the statue when it was inaugurated 136 years ago, the water level is identical to what it is today. It's amazing. The Little Mermaid in Copenhagen that was placed on a rock 10 feet from the shore in 2013 still hasn't gotten her tail wet. Plymouth Rock that's been sitting 40 feet from the beach for 420 years has not gotten wet yet. And here's the greatest the greatest lie of all. Last year at the G7 conference in London, in, in, in the UK, the leaders of the of the free world, of the, of the G7 meeting, stood on the beach at Caribbean Bay on a platform to show the effects of the sea rising behind them. One problem, somebody forgot to show them a photograph of 1925 of the, the same location and the water levels were identical. Hmm. Nothing's changed. So what about where, are the sea, where are the seas rising? If every bit of ice, if every bit of floating ice in the oceans worldwide melted overnight, do you know how much beachfront property we would lose tomorrow? Zero. Huh. Because a man by the name of Archimedes, who was one of the greatest mathematicians in the world, who developed the principle, not a scientific consensus, but the principle of... of uh, of um of floating ice and, and water and and um buoyancy when you take ice if you fill up a glass if anybody listening to this wants to do an experiment at home fill a glass with ice above the rim pour water in the glass right to the edge of the rim with the ice above it when that ice melts if that glass overflows i'll take that person and fly him to paris and buy him dinner on the most expensive restaurant in the world and it'll never happen it can't happen but then add a handful of ice cubes to the glass and watch what happens. The colder it gets, the more the seas will rise because the buoyancy of the ice will be forcing down on the water. That's what will yeah. happen. Michael, let me ask you something. 
the press is one of the, I, you know, I, I'm part of the press, but I have to say this. They are one of the most critical people about this subject, and they report that there is a problem. They, they say it, it's a big problem. Now, did you ever try to talk to them and tell them to, to understand what's really going on? They know what's going on. They won't listen to it. They won't listen to the scientists. They, they refuse. They will not do it. They, they are on their own. Let me tell you a little story of what, what's going on. And, and they can't, you know, it's amazing what they did. Let me give you an example. Something happens. Okay. Under the Paris Climate Accord, which, by the way, has nothing to do with climate. It has to do with the environment and cleaning up, with clean air, clean water, and everything else. Under the Paris Climate Accord, uh, countries of the world now have to use uh, a reduction in the use of fertilizer and reduce their water usage and everything else. To give you an example, in Sri Lanka, the government ban on chemical fertilizers has resulted in a tremendous crop production damage, leading to food shortages and hunger in many regions of Sri Lanka. The crisis is said to have begun due to a multiple of compounding factors, which includes tax cuts, biological farming, which is not allowed, and, and a lack of food due to adherence of the Paris Climate Accord. They may have that may have been the straw that broke the camel's back because in turn it led to the, to an insurrection and and the president of the country Ratpatska has fled Sri Lanka ahead of an expected resignation. There were riots going on in Sri Lanka. And guess what? Under the Paris Climate Accord, which uh, which France and Germany signed on to, they have fired up their coal-fired plants. And they're now burning coal again because their energy production is practically zero. They have to use coal now. So they're ignoring what's going on. But meanwhile, we've got a president who wants to sign on to this thing and is going to spend a trillion dollars over the next 10 years on, on something that we can't change. It's impossible to change it. So we can't change climate. There's a difference between climate and weather. Right. Every, time, every time there's a weather anomaly, the press comes out and says, or, and, and the politicians come out and they scream, it's global warming, it's climate change. No, it's not. Here's the difference between climate change and weather. On January 19th, 1977, there was three inches of snow in Miami Beach. It's the first time it's ever happened in 100 years and it hasn't happened since. That's a weather anomaly. If it snowed every year from November to March for the next 20 years in Florida, that's climate change. But a weather anomaly is not. Why are we seeing more tornadoes now and more hurricanes and such? Not because they're there. There's no more than they've been in the past. It's because our reporting is better. We have better scientific technology to report these things. We're finding that there are smaller tornadoes and we're reporting on them. So we're ahead of the curve. That's right. what it is. When you got a state like California that's screaming we're in drought for 20 years, but they won't build a reservoir, they take a trillion gallons of water that runs off from the spring thaw from the Sierra Madre Mountains every year, and they they built culverts to pipe it out to the middle of the Pacific Ocean instead of saving it so they could water their crops. California has 30% of the agriculture in this country. Last year, they let 200,000, oh, excuse me, 80,000, I'm sorry, 80,000 almond trees die. They were the largest almond producer in the world. They stopped exporting almonds now because they haven't got enough for America alone. Yeah. And every you time know, there's a fire, every time there's a fire in the California forest, they blame it on climate change. Well, Maine and New York have more forest land than the entire state of California, and there are less forest fires in, in Maine and, and New York. Why? Because they have a forestry program. They clean up the forest and they have fire breaks so fires don't spread like they do in California. California still has aerial uh, uh, electric grids. They won't bury their electrical wires. They're getting short, sh uh, short circuits, which are causing forest fires. That's exactly what's happened. But they won't, yeah. they won't face it. They, they want to rather blame somebody else. You know, I, one of the questions that I have, which I think is very interesting because you mentioned it, okay? What's the difference between climate change and clean water and clean air? Is there a difference? Because people 
are very concerned about their clean water, especially here in Florida, okay? I want to know, could you explain to our audience what the difference is? Well, here's, here's one of the differences. Okay, number one, clean water and, and, and a clean environment is not going to change the climate. All the plastic floating in the oceans now is not going to make it hotter or colder. Uh, it, it may have something to do with uh, with ocean currents and stuff, but it's not going to do that. Then you've got companies like Coca-Cola who sign on and say, we're going green. They're going green? Susan, I remember when I was younger, and it wasn't that long ago. Yeah, we're talking about bottles and everything else and sodas right. and everything else. They used to come in glass bottles. Recycling when we were growing up was different. We didn't have plastic bags in supermarkets. We had paper bags. Um, uh, our parents used to use them to 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 make book covers uh, uh, for our books in school. We used them for garbage under the sink. We used to put garbage bags under there. Recycling, the milk bottles and soda bottles used to go back to the soda companies. They used to wash them out, sterilize them, fill them up, and send them back. That's recycling, not grinding up plastic and only making more plastic and only 14% of what we throw in our recycling bins is recycled. The rest goes shipped out on barges and gets dumped in the ocean in the Asian countries. We see it. It's happening all the time. But Coke is screaming, we're going green. Well, then stop putting your sodas in plastic bottles. Right. Let's go right. back to putting them in glass and recycling the way we should. But you said before that everything is based on money. money. It is. It is. Okay. When you've got so Go ahead, um, Michael. Talk well, about the money situation and the money why. Situation, all the, well, look what happened in the United States. We gave we gave a corporation six hundred million dollars under uh, under Obama, Solyndra, to to uh, to produce uh, solar panels. They they produced nothing. They produced nothing. It was the biggest scam in the world. We gave away to our tax dollars. How many kids could we feed who go hungry every night with that money in this mm -hmm. country? Yeah, what exactly. Did what did we do? We gave away six hundred million dollars, mm -hmm. and that's only part of it. Look at the money that they just want that the, they want to spend now. Nine hundred billion dollars. Nine hundred billion dollars in a in a in a in a in a in a, in a, in a routine to to drop the deficit. And when you look at that bill, I mean, I, I listened to the, the State of the Union message last night. I was I was appalled. I couldn't believe the numbers he was throwing around. $900 billion for green energy, that's going to change absolutely nothing. Let me give you an idea of some of the predictions that have been made over the years, Susan. You wouldn't believe okay. this. Yeah. We all know about Earth Day. Earth Day is an annual event that's held every, every year around the, the last week in April, around, usually around April 22nd, to, to demonstrate the, the support for environmental protection. It was first held in 1970. The predictions that were made in Earth Day back then would scare the living hell out of you. Perfect Ooh. example. Perfect example, Harvard University biologist George Wall claimed that civilization will end within 15 to 30 years unless immediate action is taken against problems facing mankind. That was 50 years ago. He said it was going to happen in 15 years. Harvard University, um, uh, Washington University, Bar uh, Professor Barry Comino, who's also a biologist, stated that we are in an environmental crisis which threatens the survival of this nation and the world will be, will, will be um, there'll be no human habitation within 20 years. Everything is going to decay and organ, organ, uh, organic pollutions will rise up and your oxygen in America's rivers will going to cause feeds, fish to have a massive die off. Unbelievable. The New York Times editorial of, of April 1970, the day after the first Earth Day, warned that men must stop pollution and conserve his resources because with the existence of Earth and would save the race from an intolerable uh, deterioration and possible extension within 20 years. 20 years? That was 1970. Right. Pearl Ehrlich declared the confidence in a Mademoiselle magazine that population will inevitably completely outstrip whatever small increases in food supplies we have, and the death rate in the world will be 200 to 300 million people die. They called it the great die-off. It was an, echo, uh, an economic ca catastrophe. By 1975, experts felt that food shortages will be escalated so bad that the level of world hunger will be unbelievably proportion, uh, unbelievable proportions. It's amazing. They said that four to six billion people will die and 65% of the population of the world will be gone by 20, by, by the year 2000. That's horrible. Yeah. Let me tell definitely. you, let me tell you 
why this world needs carbon dioxide. Because carbon dioxide is the lifeblood of everything in this world. It is sustainable. The earth, carbon dioxide does not heat up anything. When they give you the baloney, and I mean it sincerely, it's just a bunch of lies, that carbon is heating the world and ruining the ozone layer, it's an absolute lie. They're doing temperature uh, detections on the surface of the earth. For example, the IPCC has set up a temperature monitor to monitor the temperature, and guess where it's located? At the end of the runway in Rome, at Leonardo da Vinci Airport, where planes are taking off, blowing their jet engines right into it, right into it. NOAA has set up a temperature detection unit on the campus of Arizona University in the parking lot on Black Macadam, where trucks are going in and out and parking alongside of it. There's another one at UCLA right next to a, um, a heat duct exhaust from a big air conditioning unit next to a barbecue that's sitting there and they're telling us that the temperatures are rising. NASA is taking the temperatures in the troposphere which is in this which is which is 50,000 feet in the air that's what's causing it. Carbon dioxide heats up nothing it's like putting a, a pan on a stove and expecting the pan to heat the stove. The earth's reflection from the sun is what heats carbon Carbon rises in the air, and when it rises in the air in the evening and the sun goes down, it cools and falls back to the earth. The plants eat it. They burp up oxygen. To give you an example how much carbon we need, because of all the carbonates in the world, we are using 47% less land to grow the same amount of crops we did 50 years ago. And it takes less than it takes 6% less water to grow those crops. Famine in the world has almost been eliminated. There were very mm -hmm. few countries that are that are in, in a famine state. And that's exactly what's happening. One of the things that's also happening is that in schools, okay, grades, kindergarten through high school, people, young people are taught that there is climate change and they do all kinds of experiments and they're taught to really be careful to be careful because there is such a problem now if you had a chance to teach kids all about this what you call a situation which is really untrue what would you do i would do what my third grade teachers did to me when i was in school we, we learned about science through experiment Archimedes' principle of, of buoyancy. Amazing. When you when you and I were in school, Susan, what did we learn about the ocean's tides? We learned that the moon and, and the planet and the planets control the tide. When the moon is closer to the earth, the tides are higher. I saw Al Gore on television two years ago screaming to Chris Wallace on Fox News that he was in Miami and the tides are rising so high because the ice is melting that he saw fish swimming in the streets. I was throwing my shoes at the TV screen saying, where are the <laughs> pictures, Al? Show me the pictures of the fish. Right. I went on I went on social media. I couldn't find any pictures of, of fish swimming in the streets. Right. I couldn't find a thing. I called, right, I called TV stations. I said, do you have any fi pictures of fish swimming in the streets? They thought I was nuts. Could right. a fish have gotten lost during high tide? Sure. But what they show you, what the media shows you, and I don't know why they're on this ball game. Nobody wants to take on. Nobody wants to take them on. Right. Is 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 they show you pictures of high tide, but do you know something? The moon controls the tides both high and low. What they don't show you is photos of the low tide, where you have to walk out seventy-five to eighty yards more to get to the water when there's low tide. Yeah, you know. I the moon is 36,000 miles closer to the Earth right now. Have you seen the full moons lately? You see how large they are? Yeah, That's definitely. what controls the tide. Mm -hmm. It's called king yeah. tides. It happens every 75 years. Well, we're at the end of the show, Michael. You have said a lot, and people ought to listen to you, and they ought to read your book. Allegory is the story of how one man has created a narrative that has gaslighted the world into believing that unless drastic measures are taken, the world would be destroyed within 10 years by greedy industrialists. And I want to say, Michael, that this is a very interesting book, and I want to know how people get it. Well, they can get it on Amazon.com, Barnes & Noble, or any of their booksellers. 
Um, it's 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 being uh, published by uh, by uh, Book Locker, and uh, it's it's available at any book outlet in the in the country. Uh, I'm not, you know, I didn't write the book, Susan, to uh, to try to totally change people's minds. I wanted people to, I wanted to open up their minds and open up their eyes and not look to change anyone's mind. Well, you know, I just want them to have an open mind and think for themselves and realize that they're being gaslighted. Right. It's amazing. It's it's frightening what, what's going on. And they're all buying into this baloney. It's, 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 it's just a bunch of lies. Michael, you have a lot of things to tell people. So if they want to get in touch with you, how do they do that? Um, they can go to my website, uh, michaelsolomonbooks.com. And uh, there's a contact page there. And uh, that's where they can reach me. Um, you know, Susan, I, I wrote this book out of anger because I, I, I just stood there and, and, and I listened to this stuff and I'm saying to myself, my God, this, this can't be true. And I looked at it and I'm, and the arrogance, I mean, Al Gore, Al Gore keeps telling us that this, we're going to lose 50 miles of sea, of, of sea coastline within the next 20 years. So what does he do? He builds a $12 million mansion on the beach in Montesino, California. Hmm. Well, Barack I, Obama did the same thing in Martha's Vineyard, and so did the big climate czar, uh, John Kerry. I mean, it's amazing. These guys fly around the world. Al Gore spends $36,000 a month heating his swimming pool, and he buys $432 a month in carbon offsets. And he claims that he's he's giving his that his money is being used to help carbon offsets. Well, close your pool down and fill it up with dirt and plant something in it. I mean, right. this, this is ridiculous. Michael, this, you know ridiculous. that this is all politics. And not only that, um, it's not only politics. It's a way for people, as you said before, to make a lot of money. And that's what it's all about. And I want to thank you for being on the Susan Brenda Show. It's really been a pleasure. And I want to have you on again we could talk for an hour but <laughs> <laughs> but we don't have the time I but know, come on the show again and let's I, talk about another subject that you find very important it'll be my pleasure susan and you know i just want people to take a look at the empirical science and look and look at it from from the scientific view not from the rhetoric and that's what they're listening to you tell a story over and over and over again, people start to believe it. Al Gore is starting to believe his own lies. It's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. And the dirtiest car in the world, we even haven't gotten to that. Just give you an example. The dirtiest car in the world are EVs, electric vehicles. It takes 16,000 gallons of fossil fuel to mine enough lithium to, to produce for batteries for one vehicle. For one yep. vehicle. And the, and the electric grid can't even charge those vehicles. Well, we're dealing with a lot of hypocrites. That's what this is all about. Absolutely. So I want to thank you again, Michael Solomon, and come on again. I My say pleasure. this every time because every time I talk to you, I learn something. Thank you again. Thank you, Susan.